Luke chapter 23, and uh, we're looking at uh, verse 40. What's happened, what happened is, uh, yesterday when I was preaching, actually, the uh, sound went off, so I just want to continue about where I sort of left, left off, somewhere there. I'll just uh, read verse 39. One of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, that's on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. As I said yesterday, he was really only interested in his own skin. He wanted to be saved from this uh, excruciating pain of the crucifixion. Obviously, it's a lot of pain to go through when you're crucified. The point is this, you and I need to understand that we're sinners in the sight of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified for you and for me. He tasted death for every man. But the other, answering, rebuked him, in other words, told him off, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. And this man, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ, hath done nothing amiss. No words, nothing out of place. The Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect Son of God, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. When has he taken your sins away? Has he washed your sins away in his own precious blood? You know, what we need to do is understand that we're sinners in the sight of God. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because of that, we're heading down to hell, and God does not want you to go down to hell, my friend. And that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to die upon the cross, has been reading, he'd been crucified, being crucified here for your sin and mine. Yes, he said, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. This man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto him, Je uh, unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus said unto him, Verily or truly I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Meaning that that man was saved. That man came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ even at this 11th hour, we might call it, when he was nearly dying. He received the Lord Jesus Christ as his Saviour. Now I wouldn't advise anyone to wait that long because we don't know when we're going to, when our life is going to end on this, on this earth. That's why we need to be ready now to meet God. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Yes, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, yet God will have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. Truth is found in the Bible, the Word of God, and it's also found in a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Have you come in repentance toward God? That is, a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul be saved. Very simple. God has made it very simple. Even a child can be saved, can come to faith in Jesus Christ and have their sins forgiven through faith alone in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. God wants to forgive you of all of your sins this Arvo, my friend. Will you come to Christ? In all your sin, in all you need, just as you are, without one plea, just come. Admit that you're a sinner before God. That's repentance, that change your mind, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God promises you everlasting life. Yes, and Jesus said unto him, Verily and truly I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. In other words, one of these men that were crucified with the Lord Jesus Christ was saved. 
he received forgiveness for his sins. But the other man on the other side of the Lord Jesus Christ was not saved. In other words, he didn't receive forgiveness for his sins. Well, it's not recorded here. That will be the same for each and every person upon the face of the earth. You will either receive the Lord Jesus Christ, or you'll keep on rejecting or neglecting him, and end up dying and going down to hell. That is not what God wants, my friend. God wants to save your soul, this other. And the only way he can save you is if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So, what you need to do, again, repentance to your God. In other words, change your mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and God promises you everlasting life. And that can be yours, absolutely free of charge. The Lord Jesus Christ paid for our sins upon the cross. But for you to take advantage of that, you need to believe upon him. You need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you done that? Have you called upon the name of the Lord? Have you put your faith in Him? The Word of God says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have that spiritual and eternal life that we all need urgently that can only come by putting our faith in Jesus Christ as our Saviour? Otherwise he'll be our, he'll be our uh, judge. See, the Saviour or judge, just like these two men, on one side of the Lord Jesus Christ and the other side of the Lord Jesus Christ. One was saved and one died, I believe, in a lost condition because he did not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He did not put his faith in Christ for his salvation. In other words, he died without forgiveness for his sins which meant that he's burning in hell right now. Don't let that be you. You see, if you die without Jesus Christ as your Saviour, he'll be your judge. And this should really strike fear into our hearts, knowing that we're in big trouble with God Almighty. Why? It's because of our sin. We need forgiveness for our sins. And the only way that we can receive forgiveness is not through a man-made religion. Man-made religion will take you down to hell, my friend. It's worse than useless. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to come to Christ. We need to put our faith in the person of Jesus Christ to be in heaven. We could never ever be in heaven apart from Him. Yes, so this one man was saved. On one side of the Lord Jesus Christ, the other man was lost. And I believe it looks like he died in that condition. Don't let that be you. Do not leave earth without Jesus Christ as your saviour. Otherwise, he'll be your judge. And it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. The sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the, in the midst. In other words, the veil of the temple was torn in the middle. When Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the spirit. I remember his words. He said, No man taketh my life from me. I lay it down to myself. 
I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my Father. So the Lord Jesus Christ voluntarily laid down his life for you and for me. That's different to someone being killed, someone being murdered, my friend. That wasn't the case with our Lord Jesus Christ. He voluntarily laid down his life in sacrificial love for you and for me on account of our sins. Our sins and of course a separation between ourselves and God. And yet there is a way back to God from the dark paths of sin. That way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to what he said, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. You need to get off the broad road that leads to hell and destruction. In other words, the highway to hell. You need to get off onto the narrow road that leads to heaven. And the only way you can do that is if you enter through the door. And as I said, the Lord Jesus Christ is the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. Are you saved this other? In other words, have you received forgiveness for your sins? Or are you still on that broad road, that highway to hell, my friend? There's no need to stay on that road. On that broad road that leads down to hell and destruction. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Again, repentance. Change your mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people came together to that site. Sorry, and all the people that came together to that site beholding the uh, things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counsellor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel of, and deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulchre that was hewn in stone, it was cut out in stone in other words, where it never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulchre and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath, the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So, Lord Jesus Christ had died on the cross for our sins. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. Praise God the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour, my friend. He wants to save your soul, this other. As I said before, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Again, repentance is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and, put you, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Salvation is absolutely free of charge to us. But it costs God everything to send his beloved son to die upon the cross for the likes of you and I. Guilty, hell-deserving sinners, as we are. Or as we all were, I should say. 
Those who are saved are saints now. God does not class us as sinners at all. But when we're born in this world, we are born as sinners. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So the Lord Jesus Christ wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. The only way he can do that is through his once for all sacrifice upon the cross. Christ was once offered to bear the sin to many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So, if you come in repentance toward God, as I've said, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Your soul will be saved, and you will have a home in heaven. You'll have peace with God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about Christ. It's all about the person of Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified for us upon the cross. You just be reading concerning his crucifixion, and then they buried him. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour, my friend. He wants to save your soul from a long lost eternity. Well, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great day.